Good morning, Transformation Church. Welcome to another Sunday morning. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. Uh, no fast songs this morning. We're going to be taking it a little slower. Hopefully you can meditate on these words and you can find something in them this morning. Church, what is up? Another Sunday. Welcome. We are back. We love our online family. And we love doing announcement videos. So let's get started. Connection cards, connection cards, connection cards. There's so many things you can do with the connection card. You want to get connected? Fill it out in the link below. It's awesome. There's prayer, there's getting baptized, there's finding Bible study, there's just tons of things. Go check it out. This Sunday is Q&A Sunday. Right Carl there. will be... Yeah. That's what today Sorry. means. <laughs> Carl will be answering some pre-recorded questions during the service today, but don't forget to join us after the service to do live Facebook questions. Live. All kinds of questions. Duh. And answers. All of them. 
Q&A. Questions to your answers today. Next Sunday, Carl is starting a new sermon series called Bold. I'll say I'll bold, I'll just kind of buck. It's bold. Wow. Please don't ever do that again. Where we're going to take a couple of looks at ways you can be bold in your faith. And it's going to be awesome. Make sure you check it out.
God, I pray that as we move to the other parts of the service, God, to the offering and to the Q&A, God, I pray that you would just open our minds and open our hearts to receive what we need to this morning, God, that we wouldn't be distracted by anything in the room, that we could sit down and engage with your word and with what you want us to hear this morning. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Transformation Church, um, and I hope you all had a wonderful Mother's Day last week. And before I go into um, the offering today, I just wanted to share a couple verses that I think God has laid on my heart recently, and it's from Ezekiel 36, verses 26 through 27. Um, so it says, I will give you a new heart, and I put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. So I know that for some of us, it's been quite some time since we've been outside or just, you know, in the community since we have all been in quarantine. Um, and I bet, at least for me, it, it feels like that, you know, since we're just so removed that I have become kind of desensitized to what's going on in our community and just even in this country. So I just wanted to encourage you all that God is definitely still very alive and active um, and is working in our hearts daily. Um, so if you pray with me, um, dear God, we're just so thankful for um, who you are, Lord, that you are a God that loves us so dearly, Lord, that you um, are just so patient with us and that you just extend so much grace to us on a daily basis, God. Um, and Lord, I just pray that we become more aware of just the work that you're doing to change us and, be, and for, you to become, for you to change us to, um, you know, be more like you, Lord, and just more of your image, God. So I just pray, Lord, that um, you um, are just near to us, Lord, that we feel your presence um, in our homes and just when we're alone, God. Um, and that you um, would come for us, Lord. And I pray that um, through that, God, we become so um, emboldened, Lord, just to um, see you in the, just the everyday um, activities we do. Um, and I just pray all these things in your name, God. Amen. So if you'd like to partner with us in giving, you can check out the link in the description um, of this video, or you can look at the options to give right on the screen. Um, and I hope you all have a blessed rest of your Sunday. Good morning, Transformation Church, my family, and uh, all our online family as well. Those who have been joining us from far and wide, you have stumbled upon uh, a very special Sunday. And so I've, I hope you've worshiped with us via music um, and prayer and scripture and giving. Uh, but now we're going to dive into God's word. And, and the special Sunday that you've stumbled upon is Bible and Life Q&A. This is kind of weird because we usually do this live on Sundays, like people ask questions live. And so what I have today is actually uh, three questions that people have submitted uh, that I'm going to answer live here. And, um, but before I get started, I, d I just wanted to tell you a couple of things. One, uh, next Sunday, we are starting a brand new series called Bold. And we're going to, for four weeks, talk about amazing uh, boldness and what it looks like to be courageous and uh, say how, how to pray bold prayers, how to be boldly obedient. And so you do not want to miss this next series um, uh, because I believe God's word is going to transform us from the inside out. And so join us starting next Sunday. Uh, so that's really the only thing. And then after service, uh, because this Q&A portion is not uh, live, this is uh, recorded, after the service, we're going to do a live Q&A session uh, that you can ask your questions there live, and I'm going to try and answer them live on Facebook. So join us on Facebook Live on our Transformation Church RVA page uh, for a live Q&A session right after this. And so I'm going to be bouncing around because um, there's lots of text to cover. There's lots of scripture to cover. 
But let's dive in right away to the very fir first question. And uh, I'll just tell you, you didn't take it easy on me this go round. Uh, these are three um, big ones, the three big questions. And um, they're, they're a little weighty, but I believe uh, when you leave the service today after it's over, um, my prayer is that God will have comforted and encouraged you um, and informed your heart uh, and, and that you'll leave with some steps to take. So uh, the very first question that came in from several actually uh, is this question here. Did God cause COVID-19 or the coronavirus? Did God cause the coronavirus? Uh, as we look at the world around us, um, many, uh, especially those who aren't in relationship with God, would say, you know, how can God be good and, and be allowing this to happen? Um, wh where did this come from? And I'm not just talking about physical location. I'm, I'm just talking about how could this happen and did it come from God? I've heard people saying, you know, this is a judgment from the Lord and, um, and different phrases like that. And, and so I just want to kind of directly go right to the question. And there are kind of three things for us to think about. Three things for us to approach when we think about did God cause uh, the coronavirus. And the very first thing is this, is that suffering is unnatural. Suffering is completely unnatural. Uh, now, it's prevalent and it is rampant across the world. You see it, I see it, and we've many of us have experienced suffering of some kind, uh, but it is unnatural. There is something within us that says, man, this isn't right. This, this thing should be different. And so suffering is unnatural. Now, if you're, uh, a Hin if you're Hindu, uh, you believe that suffering is, is actually payback. Um, that if in the religion of Hinduism, if something bad's happening to you, it's because you did something to deserve it. It's payback to you. Um, if you're a Buddhist, uh, actually suffering is illusory. So uh, if you look beyond the suffering, you'll look back and say, oh, well, it wasn't a big deal. It's, it's, it's nothing to be thought of. And then for those who are atheists, when they think of suffering, uh, you know, they... If you talk to an atheist, they'll just say, you know, people get hurt. Um, there's no good. There's no evil. There is no God. There's no um, here nor there about it. Uh, it's, it's very um, kind of cold, a very indifferent universe. It's pointless. So the suffering you're going through to an atheist is just life. It's just life. You're, it's pointless. You're suffering for no reason. just is. But for the Christian... That's not the case. Uh, you look all through scripture and you see people suffering and you read how Christ and God looks on it and, and is filled with compassion. Uh, suffering is awful. And, uh, but if we go back to where it began, it didn't start that way. If you, if you go back to Genesis um, at the very beginning, uh, God created the heavens and the earth. Um, and after he created each thing, he would say, uh, for instance, it says in Genesis 1, 6, then God said, let there be an expanse between the water separating water from water. So God made the expanse and separated water under the expanse from water above the expanse. And it was so uh, God called the expanse sky. Evening came, then morning, the second day and he goes on through and after each of these things he says you know what this is good this is good this is good and um then in chapters three we it kind of all comes to a crashing um you know halt this perfection this rhythm um uh, in Jewish culture, they would call it shiro, uh, sh uh, shalom, uh, which is rhythm. There was this rhythm. This is good. And then sin enters the world in chapter 3 and crushes everything that God had designed. Crushes it all. Now all of a sudden what God had meant to bless 
and to be uh, wonderful is now crushed under the weight of sin. And so uh, God did not cause um, COVID-19. God was not the source. Uh, The sinful brokenness of our world is where it came from. Uh, And this explains actually many things. Uh, If you look at cancer, if you look at poverty rates, if you look at all the suffering, uh, what you will see is that um, we live in a broken world. And it is not how God designed it. So uh, the second thing, so suffering is unnatural. There is a reason you feel like it shouldn't be this way. It's because it's not. It's not supposed to be this way. And there's coming a day when God will reconcile all of it. Uh, But the number two thing I want to point out is that God is good. Uh, God is not indifferent to our suffering. Um, He is fully aware of it. We, if we look at John 11, we see Jesus weeping at the tomb of Lazarus. If we go to Luke 7, the Bible tells us that he's moved with compassion for uh, at the funeral of this woman's dead son. You see, Jesus is good. God is good in all his fullness. Um, and So while suffering is unnatural, the God we serve is good. And the other comfort here is that God is sovereign. Isaiah 45, 7 says, I create the light and make the darkness. I send good times and bad times. Let that sit in for a second. I, the Lord, am the one who does these things. God is in complete control. So What I can assure you is whatever has filtered through his hand, you will never experience anything that is out of God's control. He's not caught off guard by COVID-19. He's not wondering or scrambling for what to do. In fact, I would, God did not cause it, but I can guarantee you that God is using it. Using it to point people to him. Using it. Uh, Because we see here in Ephesians 1.11, In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. And then in 2 Peter 3.9, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. What is this saying? This is saying God will go to any extent. He will uh, have us on our knees if it means that it points us to him. Um, God is after our attention. So if we look at God as the cause, I would say that's an error. Uh, God is not the cause. But will God use it? Yes and amen. He will. Um, In his sovereign decree, he uses all things, the good, the bad, the ugly, the sick, to point us to him. And uh, that's, that's my hope that during this time that maybe he's caught your attention. So suffering is unnatural. Uh, God is truly good. And, and, and maybe the most comforting of all, God is sovereign. He is not unaware of our pain and suffering. He's keenly aware of it. He loves us and is going to work it all out. Uh, with the end game, as Second Peter says, that all should reach repentance. Number two, this is the second question that came in. And it was kind of a tail end to uh, the first question. <clears throat> Many people are facing in this coronavirus season, stay-at-home orders and the such. Um, They're battling loneliness. Uh, So the second question was, how do I handle feeling lonely? Now, I'm an extrovert, so I thrive on relationships with other people. I have felt kind of the emptiness, the loneliness of of not being able to be around my friends uh, like I normally am. And now some of you, when I say loneliness, uh, you were battling loneliness before this ever began. 
You have felt lonely for a long time. This is normal for you. In fact, this whole COVID thing has only amplified what you already felt, which is lonely. Now, some of you, I don't know who you are, but I know some of you are out there, um, would say, hey, pastor, you know what? Um, a matter of fact, a buddy of our teams, he's worked on our sound and stuff. Um, anyway, he, he, he texted uh, our worship director and was like, man, um, I don't know what everybody's big deal is about social distancing, physical distancing. I've been social distancing my whole life. Um, so some of you actually enjoy it. Some, some of you enjoy the um, kind of the seclusion. Uh, but for many today, you may find yourself struggling with loneliness. Um, and God never meant for us to feel alone. There's a difference between loneliness and being alone. I, I think lots of us are okay being alone. Loneliness speaks to the sense that you feel like you're all by yourself and that you have no one in your corner. Um, I have, I just, I, on Thursday night, uh, I got together with some friends and we do some singing. Uh, one of them told me of a friend of theirs who just lost their son to suicide, 45 years, uh, 44 years old on Friday, um, a battling anxiety, battling probably a sense of loneliness, like I can't get out of here. Nobody understands what I'm going through. So um, if you're feeling this loneliness today, I, I just want to speak to your heart a little bit. If we go all the way back to the beginning, I know we just did, uh, but in Genesis 2, uh, 18, I just want to read a verse to you. Uh, when Jesus, when God, Jesus is creating the earth, he says this in Genesis 2, 18. He says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. You see, it was, loneliness is never what God intended for us, um, not to feel alone. If you're introverted, I'm not really talking about you being introverted, um, because that, that doesn't necessarily speak to loneliness. Um, but today, some of you feel alone. And if you look through Scripture, you find several who um, were alone for a long time. You know, Jesus never got married. Paul never got married. Um, Paul's friend circle shifted quite a bit as he went on different missionary journeys. Um, but I think probably the biggest picture of loneliness, loneliness I saw was from Jesus. Um, and you probably remember the story. Jesus gets his best friends his three best guys, and he says, I need to go pray. So they go to the Garden of Gethsemane, um, and he's, he leaves the three of them right outside, and then the Bible says he goes a little further. So he went, and he was alone, and he prayed this you know, pretty epic prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane where he says, you know, Father, if there's any way that this cup could pass from me, but not my will, your will be done. Well, after he, he prays, for a while, and then he comes back, and um, his very best friends uh, were sleeping, and he kind of wakes them up. He's agitated. He's like, you know, <laughs> I brought you out here to pray with me. You can't even pray for an hour. You can't even pray with me for this limited amount of time. They left him hanging, and and it didn't just happen once. It happened three times. And and the reason I find this very important is that a lonely, a lo being alone, loneliness is not ideal, but all of us are going to experience it from time to time. But Jesus gives us grace for it, and you ask how. One way Jesus provides grace for us is that he understands. He understands loneliness. Because even after that prayer, after being abandoned three times by his guys in prayer, um, he got captured, he was taken away, and his, his people fled. They left, left him alone. Some of you probably feel that. Maybe you've experienced that. Jesus has also experienced that type of loneliness. Uh, Peter even rejected knowing him. Like I, Peter said, I don't even know that guy. And the crowd was saying, yeah, you do know him. And Peter said, no. They're, they're getting ready to convict Jesus and put him on the cross. And Peter's like, I don't even know him. 
Jesus felt loneliness. And even as he was nailed to the cross, what, what did he say? What did he say when, when our Savior was nailed to the cross for our sins? What did he say? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Loneliness. I, I want to take us to one verse here. It's in Hebrews uh, 4, uh, 15 and 16. I think this will be good for you. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is in every respect has been tempted as we are and yet without sin. Let us then with confidence, hear this, draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of, and it says need, but you could say in time of loneliness. Jesus experienced it, which makes him all the more capable to help you with yours. Um, so what would that prayer sound like? So say you want to pray today, God, um, <clears throat> I need help with this lonely feeling I am having. I think the best prayer David actually prayed in Psalms. Um, in Psalms 25, 16, he says, Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Some of us need to pray that prayer today. God, turn to me and be gracious to me. And we even see Christ promise as he's leaving this earth to go prepare a place for you and I in heaven. He says, I will be with you to the ends of the earth. He knows. He knows. And probably one of the greatest promises in all of Scripture comes out of Isaiah 41.10. So if you're feeling lonely, let me just read this over your heart. It says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Even if it was just that first phrase, fear not, I am with you. You are not alone today. Um, we also find in Scripture in Matthew 18, 20, where it says where two or three are gathered, I'm in the midst. So when we talk about Christ's presence being among us, he says in Matthew 18 that that presence comes in community. So um, the other thing I would encourage you with, if you're feeling lonely today, I, I would encourage you to reach out to community. Just because we're, we have stay-at-home orders or even safer-at-home orders does not mean that you can't reach out to our staff, reach out to our leaders, reach out to your brothers and sisters. And if today, maybe you don't have a church home, maybe you don't know anything about this Jesus, but you're feeling lonely, let me tell you something. There's no warmer embrace than the family of God. There's no warmer embrace because many of us feel lonely because we don't feel like we can be ourselves in front of the people we love. We don't feel like people actually know us. And, and if I'm just being transparent with you, because I, I need to move to this last question, there's nothing more fulfilling, more life-giving than to be fully known and fully loved. And Jesus knows you. He created you. And you need to find I would encourage you to find some community where you can be fully known, the good, the bad, all of it, fully known in, in your questions, in your um, indecision, in your doubt, fully known, all of you, not just what you'll show people, fully known. You need to find a community where you can be fully known and fully loved at the same time. That is honestly the cure for loneliness because people will see you and that loneliness will disappear. Lastly, um, and kind of, it's happened during this COVID period, but um, uh, it's kind of not coronavirus related. It, it's kind of U.S. related. So if you're watching this outside of the U.S., uh, you've probably maybe seen it on the news. I don't know. Uh, but if you're in the U.S., you've definitely heard this. Uh, but I got, I received the question. What should be our response to Ahmad Arbery, the murder of Ahmad 
Arbery. If you are unaware of this story, um, just a, a week or so ago, a video broke of um, two white men in a pickup truck um, chasing down, stopping, and uh, killing a young black man as he was jogging. Um, and so many have asked me the question, what should our response be to this whole storyline? And so um, I still hope to have my job on Monday, but I just need to be very clear with you today. The very first thing that should be the Christian response should be brokenness. Complete, utter brokenness. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, this is what I mean. Um, look back. Do you remember when we talked about Nehemiah and he found out this news about um, uh, his people and and how uh, the city was torn down and, and the thing had been completely destroyed? And the Bible says that it basically took his legs out from under him and he was so grieved and broken by it and he spent days in prayer over it. Um, I am almost ashamed of some of my Christian brothers and sisters who, instead of erring on brokenness, they err on the side of uh, fact-checking um, or um, menial arguments instead of saying, man, this is a life God created that is no longer here. Um, if Jesus were here, Jesus would be brokenhearted. And I guarantee you, he, he, Jesus, was the first one to shed a tear over that. So brokenness, followed by acknowledgement. Um, acknowledgement. Uh, we have to acknowledge, as Christians, that there is a problem. Um, Jesus was a perfect example of this because Jesus came into a system that was operating not the way God intended, and he called it out. Um, I think many times we see something that we may not necessarily agree with, but um, we don't go to the point of saying anything. We just stay ha, silent. And I think silence speaks just as loud as um, saying something. So uh, acknowledgement is important. Um, if, this is the way I'm going to ask you to think, if it had been two black guys chasing down a white guy in their pickup truck with shotguns and then killed him, um, I, th I think for many, uh, you, you may be feeling differently. And honestly, uh, if it had been a white kid checking out the construction site, they probably would have just called the police and made a report. To watch a video where in the United States of America, a Christian nation, to watch somebody hunted down and killed like that is unspeakable. It's unspeakable. I don't care what the facts are. I don't care what happened before. I'll tell you what, what matters to me is that there was such a disdain for the image of God that was born in that young man. Um, I don't know if the guys, the McMichaels were Christians. I, I don't know. But here, I, I can probably tell you they weren't. Um, um, I'll just say this very frankly and I'll move to my last point. Um, there is no room in the family of God for racism. There's no room for that type of uh, let's be silent about it or let's just, yeah, I, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but listen, um, Jesus expects more out of you and it's not just enough for us to preach the gospel and cross our fingers here. Because the last point is we should be broken. We should acknowledge that there is a legitimate problem 
And if you have a problem with what's being preached here, uh, you can check scripture. Um, and there are probably other churches too that uh, may preach differently. But we believe that God bore his image in all of mankind. Um, the lastly, I, I just want to say speak up. Speak up. The Bible would command us. So we've talked about Nehemiah being broken, Jesus calling out examples of, of the inadequacies of, of a local system. And then the lastly, I, I just want to say speak up. Proverbs says several things. Proverbs 14.31, He who oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. Psalms tells us the Lord protects the strangers. He supports the fatherless and the widow, but he thwarts the way of the wicked. Proverbs 31, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. Proverbs 3, do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is, not, uh, when it is in your power to act. The Bible is clear. You need to speak up. And if I've, as I close, I just want to say one thing. We should be bathing all of this in prayer. I don't know when we started defaulting to Fox News and CNN instead of our prayer closets. I don't know when we started as Christians being more politically minded than gospel centered. But I am pleading with you today. And if you feel a little edginess, there is. Because I believe Christians are held to a higher standard. And God expects more of us. What should our response be? Be broken. Acknowledge the problem. And let's pray about it together and speak up. So would you go to the Lord in prayer with me for Ahmad Arbery and his family? For those in fault, they, um, God would speak to our hearts and to the things that um, may be wicked within us. Um, let's pray. Father, thank you for hearing our prayer today. Thank you for seeing us inside and out. You do know us fully, all the dark corners. And so today, for those who maybe have realized, I, I need this Jesus they're talking about. Lord, I ask that they would pray this prayer. Dear God, forgive me of my sins. I know that you died and rose again as payment for my salvation. And I give you complete control of my life. Help me to obey you and follow you. And for those today who may be battling loneliness, God, I ask that you would encourage their hearts and, and encourage them towards com the community of faith. Lord, today I ask that uh, for those who may be wondering why in this whole God uh, coronavirus world, Lord, uh, we may not see it on this side of glory, but one thing we can depend on is your goodness and your sovereignty. And that there is a day coming when you are going to fix all that is wrong. And lastly, God, I, I just call and lay before you the family of Ahmad Arbery. And those in that community, I pray for our country. I pray for our leaders. God, I pray for our church. God, open our eyes to see others the way you see them. God, we don't. We want to see all of your creation um, as you designed it to be seen. And, and as I think of this situation, Lord, I just ask that you would <laughs> extend grace and mercy to us and our failings and that we, we would then extend that grace and mercy to those um, we're seeing God that your justice that your rightness would work through us as tools to um, see your kingdom come here on, on this earth in this country it's in your name that we ask all these things. Amen.
hey, listen, I hope you still have toes left, uh, but I love you. Man, I love you. Um, and I pray God stirred your heart through his word as much as he stirred mine. Would you worship with us? And I will see you next week. God bless you. Away, away from the noise, alone with you. Away, away to hear your voice and meet with you. Nothing else matters For Lord my one desire is To worship you I live To worship you I live I live to worship you To worship you, I live To worship you, I live I live to worship you oh, 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 Oh